it's a pleasure to be here. I think I'm uh, tagged as the data and infrastructure guy. Uh, so uh, Kevin Larson from the Office of the National Coordinator of Health IT. I, I always start with what's the goal? And the goal for me is all about improvement, improvement in healthcare. And measures are tools, and they, like other tools, are tools that can uh, have better purpose or, or worse purpose, and they can, they can be fit to purpose or not fit to purpose. And I think uh, I work to figure out how do these measures as tools really help the people that actually improve care. And to quote Don Berwick, um, uh, only those who provide care can improve care. And, and someone later said to me, well, you should change that only those who are involved in care can improve care, because actually patients can improve care just like providers can. And so th the question to my mind is always, how can the measures we build as tools be most useful to the people uh, at the front lines to use them to improve care? How do they do that? They see the measures, uh, they use the measures to see their, how they're going, wh where they've been, where they need to go. A provider, a, a patient can see them, use them to say, where should, who should I pick? Which place fits my values? Which place fits my goals? A provider can use them to say, here's a group of people that I should do outreach for. They should have flu shots. They should have mammograms, and they don't have them yet. So I'm going to work to make that happen. So if I start with that place as measures as tools, that really helps me then to think about what the core measures should look like. There are other users of measures. There are purchasers. There are public health planners. There are people that build policy. They need good measures as well. And so how do we link these together so that everyone has good tools so that we can all improve care together? Uh, uh, my window into this is at the health system I came from. We actually did a measures inventory. And we were tracking 1,500 measures between all of the federal, state, private, and public people. We actually were actively managing about 350 of those within our one single health system. And uh, we started a committee to do just this, a line around the measures, and started with the 10 diabetes measures that all were slightly different, but aimed at the same goal of improving diabetes care. Uh, it was really revolutionary for us as a health system to do, and this, I've been watching the same thing happen at a number of different places, uh, both in the federal and the state um, landscape. Uh, and I'll, I'll quote the CEO of my, the health system I came from, and I think about this a lot. He liked to say, uh, feedback is a gift. And every time you get feedback, say, thank you for this gift of feedback. I want to use this feedback and really improve. So how do we get that providers and purchasers and everyone wants feedback and thinks about measurement and thinks about the measurement feedback as a gift? that they can leverage and use to improve and get better. That's where we need to go. So the question is, how do we get there? How, how do we get the infrastructure that gets us to that place where feedback is a gift? And the, the guiding frame I've been using around health IT is that of uh, uh, pilots in computer-assisted flying. So if you think about how someone in an in a old-fashioned airplane works, they have lots and lots of dashboards and lots and lots of feedback. They have to constantly pay attention to all of it, and it's, it's really hard and quickly gets overwhelming. But you can automate a bunch of that, and with good computer systems, you can actually push to the side a lot of your measurement and only alert you when, you when the pilot really needs to know something, and the pilot can actually act and make decisions hey, you're getting too low, the weather is changing and you didn't realize it. How do we build the kind of digital infrastructure that treats our providers and patients with that same kind of respect and leverages the best parts of technology but also leverages the best parts of their decision making? So if we want to get there, what are the steps? Well, I'm going to highlight a couple of the things that I, that I found as highlights over the workshop. Uh, George Isham gave a terrific talk about complex adaptive systems. And the idea of a complex adaptive system is that it's not a centralized place. There's not a giant database in the sky where everything goes and then someone as a central planner says, do this, do this, do this. It's really how do all the parts of the system give each other feedback and they're constantly giving each other feedback and they want feedback and they use that to course correct. It's how birds fly in the air in wonderful formations. It's not because someone is centrally commanding them to all turn. 
they know and give each other feedback and they turn when they need to turn to avoid something. We need to build the kinds of measures that give each other that feedback all the way through our health system so that we can all be much more nimble like that, like that group of birds and not be constantly waiting for the message that Helen gets two years too late from her health plan. Uh, I also learned a lot from Craig and the work that they're doing in Vermont and uh, I call that deep alignment. So uh, what I've, in my year and a half here at ONC thinking about measures, I've seen a couple of kinds of alignment. One is a strategy alignment, which is really important, and that's policy people thinking about, hey, we all should, diabetes care is really important, let's all align around diabetes care. And that's helpful, but it doesn't actually solve that problem I had at my health system where we had eight diabetes measures we were actively managing, because at the policy point, everybody thought they were the same. The data people and the clinicians could tell you all the tiny little ways that each of those diabetes measures were different. So the question is how do we at the same time we're doing high level policy alignment, we also do deep alignment and don't add variance into our system when we don't need it. How do we make sure that a diabetic for measure A is the same as a diabetic for measure B is the same as a diabetic for measure C? And that's actually harder than you would imagine, but it's the work we have to do. Um, the, uh, a third talk actually came in the report out uh, from Brent James from Intermountain Health, and he was talking about the importance of including process in how you think about uh, measurement. So uh, people that know me know that I, I really like thinking process, and I think that process is one of the keys through this. And it, Brent spoke about this high-value health system where a number of healthcare organizations compared their quality information and they found that only overlaying it with the processes of care did they really understand uh, the differences between the organizations. An example he gave was the Mayo Clinic's cost of knee surgery was significantly lower than Intermountain Healthcare's or Geisinger's. And they, they couldn't quite figure it out looking at the data alone. They noticed that, that um, Mayo didn't actually charge for any rehab services for knee surgery. It was only when they looked at the process of care and realized that the Mayo Clinic did all of their rehab prep for uh, their total knee surgery before the surgery, that the patient didn't need any post-surgical rehab because they had taught everything they needed to know beforehand and the patient could leave the hospital fully taught in how to do, knee, how to do their own knee exercises and knee rehab. In order for us to get value out of the healthcare system, we're going to need to be able to see those, that, that variance and those differences and have a language to discuss and learn best practices back and forth. And so one of the ways that measurement is a tool is it gives us windows into where that opportunity is and where that variance is. Uh, some of the um, activities, uh, another thing I'd like to highlight is that we've actually done some work because of this uh, workshop, which is, I think is terrific. So a, a couple of those things that have actually happened is uh, uh, I was part of a process with a number of others that was giving some um, technical assistance to states around state's measurement infrastructure. And state after state was really interested in alignment. They were looking for a set of core metrics. And we could start pointing these states to some places like the IOM, some places like the National Quality Forum, and Health and Human Services who have been doing measure alignment and saying, here are states, here, here are some aligned measures, really work on this. They said, this is fantastic, we want more, we want more. We don't want to build our own. We're not building our own because we want to. We want to align to what everyone else is doing. Um, so California has engaged in that already, Michigan has engaged in that already, Rhode Island is engaged in that, looking at the stuff that we connected them to because of this workshop already in place. Another activity that Craig and I have been collaborating on is actually leveraging the data that he's capturing from Vermont to help us as we build new measures. To say, where did you learn about which measures were easy and which measures were hard? And how can we use that as we build national measures to know that we're building the measures that have the lowest burden and the highest impact? Uh, and the final thing is uh, work that Helen and, and team are doing at the National Quality Forum around this buying value alignment. We actually started bringing states into that conversation in large part because of this discussion. We realized that states like California weren't at the table. It was right at that point federal and private. And we said, well, wait a minute. 
What about federal, private, and state? And they're now at the table helping to drive that agenda. So, so the IOM has done a fantastic job at pulling this together. It's really been a treat to be a part of this. We look forward to continuing to help build out this measurement infrastructure, getting these tools and this visibility so that people can improve the care around the country. Thank you.